to engaging people on the ground, regardless of their statuses, regardless of their identity, but they are people and they have to be listened to. And I've got the sense that that process has not even been started. It has not been started because the department lacks legitimacy to engage persuasively those stakeholders that they found problematic. And let me warn once more the officials in the department. And I will do so by borrowing from the Freedom Chart. It says, no government can justly claim authority unless it's based on the will of the people, close quote. And it will seem that for the department to seek the South African police service to escort them has got to do with lack of legitimacy. And how government loses legitimacy in the eyes of the people. What are the signs that one can show is when the leadership is afraid to meet with the people, is when the government is afraid to meet with the people and can only meet with the people in the presence of the defense force or, or the police. So I'm saying, there's no report that we should be considering because no work has been done at all. And it is pointless to go slide by slide. It's pointless to go slide by slide. There's a lot that one can identify. But the fact that stakeholder engagement is inconclusive and the police service have been invited to, 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 to escort government officials, and that government is the people, is disappointing. And I call on this meeting to reject this report because no work has been done for six months and the department chair that they must be held accountable for not doing their, its work and to report falsely before the committee because there's no work done so far if truth is to be told. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Dr. Matthias. Uh, honorable uh, Akbar Briet. More for Shadar. Good Voorzitter, Chairperson, um, I don't think there's a better way uh, or bettering what my colleagues have said. Um, I think um, in terms of what the department has done, it is lacking. I think in terms of what the other departments in terms of of, of uh, improvement and service del delivery, et cetera, um, the other departments that were included into actually bettering the lives of the people of Guacha have done, they have failed. Um, I think um, we should have um, eight months after the fact, after we have gone there, after we have visited, we should have had a clear timeline. We had should have had a clear deadline. And I think Honorable Matias and Honorable Mbabama said it clearly, nothing has been done. Chairperson, maybe just allow me to touch on, on three things that I, I just would like to reiterate. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what my colleague said because they have sufficiently covered me. Um, the one thing was regards to, with, uh, with regards to the recognition of the traditional council. When we were in Guachu, I remember one of the cocktail officials, it was a man, if I remember correctly, quite a big, tall guy. Um, that said, he has a document in his possession um, of the Eastern Cape a government or, or, or a department of Cocta that actually proves and shows that the Amachachu are a traditional council. Um, so I would just like to, to maybe just extend that clarity that Honorable Flape asked um, in terms of is that traditional council not recognized yet? What was then, what was the finding if we were informed that it was a recognized council, there was paperwork by the province, and now the department is saying that they're not recognized yet, that needs to precede anything being done. Um, just clarity on that. Chairperson, then in terms of SAPs as well, um, I think on Bombabama covered that quite sufficiently, um, which means that the department has I don't want to say lying to us, but maybe uh, withholding all of the truth. Um, we got that feedback report from Guachu saying that 
SAPS was involved, that they were continually working with SAPS in December of 2021. When we were there in January, we were told SAPS is working with them. And now we're receiving a report that says we have only now finalized and will start working in September. Um, so what was the status quo there? Because it seems like we were working, but then we weren't, and now we are working again. Um, I just need clarity on that, Chairperson. I think the budget was sufficiently covered, and then just Narisek or the Youth and Youth Development Chairperson. I think that, and I think that was... Um, as seeing as Honorable Mahlatsi is not here from a youth stance, maybe let me talk about that. Chairperson, I am extremely worried about the youth and youth development. Um, I think we included when we said in our resolution, or we did not include, but, but I think that was the meaning. When we said that we need a multi-department delegation, we need multi-party, inter uh, multi-department intervention in Guachu. Um, we can't just have the Department of Agriculture um, fuss, look into a brick wall of Narisek and this is the option and this is the way forward. Because I think as, we, as we've seen with Narisek, as we've seen with um, the students that have gone through that process, if we have seen students, um, the problem they have in finding jobs after um, being in Narisek, that is not a viable solution. That is not the thing that we can only look at. Um, we need to see intervention from um, a Department of Education, from a Department of Higher and Basic Education, to see FET colleges, to see NISFAS, to see a lot of those things, and I'm not feeling this, Chairperson. So I would like to find out from the Department whether they have had engagements with Department of Education, be it higher or, or basic, um, um, to actually see where we can broaden the horizons to assist these, these young people to actually find or create sustainable employment for themselves in the long run. Chairperson, and I would leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you, Akbar Brett. Uh, the Honorable Member Shaw. Uh, what is happening? Oh, uh, good morning, Chair. Um, you know, I'm trying to put my video on. It is not working, but uh, if, they allow, if the Chair allows me to carry on, I will say good morning to you and all my colleagues, including our officials from the department. Chairperson, I have only a slight two questions, which uh, I think somewhere, somehow, they were a bit covered. But I think uh, for me to understand, uh, the issue is, is all about collaboration with the COCTA, both at national and provincial level. I just wanted to understand that. My question would be that, uh, can the official of the minister's office tell this committee if there are any proposals arousing out of the communal land tenure? Uh, a communal land tenure summit, which was uh, hosted by the deputy president, having an impact on the uh, Guachu, Guachu farm. If they are, what what does those plans entail? That is the question number one. Uh, chair. The second question uh, will be um, with regard to the. I have learned that the, the inclusive meeting involving community members with beneficial occupation rights was like hold was, was, was done. But I just wanted to understand if, in terms of the findings, uh, is there any lasting solution on how the department is looking forward to in addressing the land claim dispute, which is there? or is there any evidence uh, to support some of those land claims that the department is having? Those are the, my two questions, Chair, which uh, one would like to, to understand from the department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, Memasho. The Honorable Nita uh, Demasipa. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, good morning uh, to you and my colleagues. Uh, um, yeah, Chair, I just want to say first, thank you to the DG. I will definitely like to agree with Member Bama that uh, 
Uh, in as far as this presentation is concerned, there is no real progress that has been made. Uh, Chair, I'm just going to touch on the land rights inquiry. So we were given many versions as to what's happening with the land rights inquiry. First, there was a, a report that the land rights inquiry was done in 2016. And then uh, during uh, uh, Minister Mguinti's term, and then we were told that no, the land rights inquiry was done, but has not been reduced into paper. Um, and then uh, now we get in the message that the recognition of the traditional council by the Eastern Cape government should be preceded by finalization of land rights of the different categories of the people on the land. I think the key question here, uh, Chair, is that how far are we with the land rights inquiry? The department must really please and help us give us the correct version as to what is really happening with the land rights inquiry. Chair, you will recall uh, uh, Mr. Fenny saying that you, the government of the, the nation, the government, you are worse than the Bantustan government. Chair, this is an indictment on us as the committee in terms of really ensuring that we do proper oversight. Is seven months down the line, nothing has really happened. In terms of the report that we are receiving now here, we haven't, you know, there is no progress that has been made. Uh, the, the one uh, other area, which is the COCTA that we have highlighted while we were on the visit there to say, is the Amachachu recognized through COCTA? In as far as this um, report that you are receiving, there is just no indication as to where is really the department with COCTA on this matter. So Chair, I think we really have got a long way to go, but we definitely need to, to make sure that uh, really we hold uh, the department to account in terms of its role um, regarding the rural development, where it is supposed to be the uh, provide the coordination um, at rural le level in terms of infrastructure and so forth. But it doesn't end there. It, it, it also requires a proper coordination between themselves and other departments in terms of delivering on the project. Chair, we had a chief director that left us in the middle of the meeting. Is the chief director here today to answer? really to give us maybe, you know, what is really, what has been happening on the ground? Because Chair, really, let's just be honest. Subs uh, cannot really be held back because there are some hostilities on the ground in terms of doing their work. That's why they are there. They are there to really assist us in terms of managing those hostilities so that the department can do the job. Now to be told here in this meeting that, you know, we're not able to do it because of some hostilities and so forth and so forth. So really uh, the question is uh, what's happening for me really primarily is what's happening with the land rights inquiry? How far are we and um, uh, when is the department gonna really finalize that land rights inquiry? Uh, secondly, Chair, or the last one Chair, the minister, uh, Deputy Minister Kappa, promise obviously that there will be borehole and you know provided to the people. I just want to know what is the progress in that regard. There were really issues that were raised by some of the smallholder farmers of Abachachu with regards to animal disease. What happened to uh, those issues that were raised on the ground regarding the animal diseases, you know, uh, uh, the issues that the people, the people were complaining about electricity. The report doesn't really cover those electricity issues. Uh, uh, some people were complaining that they were refused to be provided with water tanks because the government says the road are too bad for them to drive to deliver the water. Um, uh, farming of livestock, the people were requesting the shearing facilities. What happened to those requests, um, really, uh, Chair? If DG can really provide us with the up-to-date information around these issues. Uh, Chair, I think that's really from where I'm going to stop. But really, I'm very worried, Chair, that we have not really made a single progress with regards to this, uh, you know, uh, oversight visit. Really, our people are struggling on the ground. 
And we cannot just, you know, be getting report that we are uh, in progress, we are collaborating, we are doing this. We want to really see the tangible things happening on the ground, solving the issues of land reform. We have just been in case and we know what the situation is. We are still going to deliberate on the on the report uh, around the case at N and uh, I'm in other areas with regards to their issues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Tate Masipa. The Honorable uh, Baukapa. Brother Kappa is hospitalized, Chair. Sorry, I thought you got the message. Oh, no, thank you for informing us, uh, Honorable uh, Kappa. I wasn't aware of that, and uh, there was no apology uh, tendered on his behalf uh, when we uh, consumed the meeting. Uh, we wish him a speedy recovery and hope uh, he can be back uh, at home and back with us as, as soon as uh, possible. Honorable members, is there any other honorable member on the platform who wishes to pose a question and have not been able to recognize? Chair? Yes, uh, Honorable Ndadema Sipo. Can I just also indicate that we've got uh, Henry Kruka is our new uh, member from the Democratic Alliance on the platform. If you can uh, recognize him, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kruger, how are you? You are muted. We can't hear what you are saying, Dr. Kruger. You are muted. Thank you, Che, and I'm always um, happy to see you as well. We come a long way, yes. um, and um, I hope I can contribute towards um, agriculture, land reform, and um, uh, um, uh, what you call it, um, rural development. Thank you, Che, for uh, for the kind words. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kruger. You are most welcome in the committee. And we look forward uh, to engaging with you in the various aspects uh, that we are mandated to as a committee. <clears throat> Honorable members, we will uh, hand back uh, to the department and perhaps uh, uh, give uh, the opportunity to the Deputy Minister, Honorable Kappa. Uh, to give input before we uh, request the DG and the officials. But uh, before I can hand over to um, the Deputy Minister, I would uh, also like to ascertain the issue of Amacha to traditional council. Mamu Kapa, can you mute your microphone? Thank you. I would also want to ascertain on the issue of amateur to traditional council and uh, be very clear on the matter. It is a traditional council that exists, that is on the ground. The chief is fully recognized and is earning a salary from the department of Cocta, like all traditional leaders in the Republic. He's also got headmen that work under him, and they are also fully recognized and are earning a salary from the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Now, it cannot be that we sit here seven months later and are not clear on what the land of Amachachu is. Speaking to the Cocta officials, they were able to spell out what the land of Amachachu entails. It is the 77 farms, including uh, the village of Ote. Now we want the department to be able to give clarity on this. You must uh, be able to respond directly on this finding because this is what we were able to see during our oversight visit while we were in Kwachu. 
is that found not to be so by the department? And if it is not so, what is the department doing in ensuring that the land tenure rights of uh, farm uh, workers and farm dwellers, as well as uh, the labor uh, tenants that are there, uh, uh, his rights are being enforced. But if this is indeed the traditional council's land, what is the department's role in a traditional council uh, space? So please be able to clarify this better because it cannot take you seven months to deal with this issue when we are able to get the uh, answers on this matter on a phone call. Secondly, I would like to get uh, a real understanding from uh, the DM Mamu uh, Kapa as uh, we were on the ground with her doing oversight. She, in the session we had uh, during the public hearings, made a lot of commitments to the community of Kwachu. I would like to understand as to has she been able to visit Kwachu since the departure of uh, the portfolio committee's oversight? And if indeed it is so, what has been the deliverables to the people of Kwachu? As uh, a lot of uh, the community was speaking about handling facilities, fencing that uh, cattle are just wandering off to the road and causing accidents. There is also been a, a, a for some corner or a hot water problem uh, for cattle in the area, uh, which she had uh, made a commitment is to attending to. So can we be able to get an understanding in terms of the deputy minister's uh, role and what she's been able to um, uh, provide to the community of Kwachu as solutions because the report given by the deputy, uh, by the director general was very thin on that. Honorable members, I will now hand over to the honorable deputy minister, Mamu Kapa, and then hand over to the officials of the department for further responses. Panyaosa. Uh, thank you very much, Chair Matiwomkulu, uh, honorable members, and uh, also the department and uh, any guests that might be in this platform. Thank you for the opportunity. Indeed, as a deputy minister, I feel strongly that, uh, Chair, I need to upfront admit that the recommendations have not been uh, effectively managed because of the reasons that I indeed don't think they are an excuse but are the real experience on the ground. Uh, responding to Honorable Kape uh, and the other members including the chair as to what is it that we sought to do. Yes chair, I've not been in uh, that area once because to an extent there was an obligation to go back to the kingdom to actually understand the areas that talk to traditional leadership. I do accept many criticisms that are saying uh, instead of dealing with communities we run to the traditional uh, uh, leadership. The issue for us to do that, it is because in my understanding, concrete experience uh, when I was amongst the members that were there during the visit, it became clear that there is a gazette, gazetted certificate of the area, the jurisdiction of Amatatu traditional authority. The, the department has no doubt about that. However, the issue is they, these people have always been 
in that traditional authority in the land uh, as as uh, all of all the members that re, that reside in those in those villages or farms if i may say so but the, the issue the farms were actually created on the amatachu land and therefore there's no difference now between the farms and the amatachu traditional land and amatachu traditional land chair also are actually part and parcel of the process of the minister as as actually instructed by law to give to give back the land to the people and not to hold the land i mean the traditional or customary land in terms of the process that is in place now that also takes us, us to summits and other and other activities 